The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
on Psalm 23. being a sheep. <coughs> I was reading one day a psalm about sheep. Now, to feed them and lead them and help them to sleep, there's a man called a Shep, a Shep, something or other, who who kind of acts like their, their father and mother. He protects them all night and guides them all day. He feeds them green grass and watches them play. And then when they're gasping with thirst from the heat, he finds sparkling streams with water so sweet. And oh, how they love him and dance round his feet. And when there is danger, because baddies are near, when strange creepy noises ring out through the air, they gather round close and they don't need to fear. Because the strong, gentle Shepman is always right there. So they pounce and they flounce and they bounce up and down and they don't go out shopping or traipsing around town. No, they bound all around and to make a glad sound. They bleed from a mound or they pound on the ground. Because all that they need the Shep's bound to have found. And thinking of sheep, with a good old ship chappy, I sometimes stop wishing that I was that happy. I wish that I too had a sheep ship like that, to to get all I need and lay enemies flat. I think of these things and I cry out in glee, oh if I were a sheep what great things I would see, what great things I could have, what great things I could be. But then I remember that I'm simply just me. At least that is what I always did say, until something happened one glorious day. My teacher was reading that very same psalm, and talking of how no harm should alarm, when she just out and said, this wonderful thing. The sheep David talks of is simply just him. And just like a shepherd with sheep in his care, so God watches you. He's always right there. I gasped at the thought that this message was true. I'm that sheep. I'm that sheep. I'm that sheep through and through. All those wonderful things that the sheep get and do, I said to myself, are in fact all for you. So now, if you hear someone bounding with glee, instead of a sheep, it's probably me. Because the best ship that there ever could be has given me all that I need to be free. And all that I need in work and in play, he lavishes on me day after day. So instead of that wishing, you'll now hear me say, God is my shipman! Hip! Hooray! Whoa.
Psalm 23, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Happy Sabbath, church family. It's Pastor Ben Guerrero. We're not together physically at the church, but we are together spiritually by the Spirit of God. As we are all connected to Jesus, He keeps us connected to one another. We live in some interesting and challenging times right now for many of us. And so in this moment, I want to share one of my favorite verses. It's from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. If you know it, you can say it with me, even sitting there in your homes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. You know, I love that I can trust my God in every area of my life, from my ministry to my relationship with my family, my friends, the community, and I get to even trust Him with my finances. And even in these difficult times, I still get to give to God my offering and my tithe as a thank you for all the ways that he has blessed us. And so one way we can do that is going to AdventistGiving.org. I just signed up today. I actually had a chance to send in my tithes and offerings. I just had to type in my church's name there in the search. It showed Vallejo Drive, 7th Avenue Church, and it makes it really easy to give. I invite you to do that. Take a moment to do that sometime this week as we continue bringing our tithes and offerings into God's storehouse so that the gospel ministry can go forward even in the face of this pandemic, even in the face of uncertainty in the future. We have a God we can trust. Let us trust Him now and let's worship Him with our giving. Let us pray. God, we thank You for the blessings You've given to us the spiritual blessings, the relationships we have, the opportunities to serve and give of our best, of our time and our talent. And Lord, we want to thank you for the treasure that you give us, the funds that we can buy, the necessities of our life. And I just pray that as we give back to you, that it is our form of faith, of trust and worship of you. So Lord, bless every person in their home right in this moment. And Lord, may we pause during this week and thank you for all that we have and all that you will provide in the future. In your holy and precious name we all say, Amen. May you continue having a blessed day and be blessed with a message from Pastor Kyle. Good morning, Vallejo Drive and our online family. These are strange circumstances that bring us together online, but we're happy that you're here with us today. Let's pray. Lord, as you open up your word, speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are living through the most unusual times that many of us can ever remember. The coronavirus and its impact on the world is truly a public health crisis as well as an economic crisis. Whole communities are quarantined Panic seems to be gripping so many. Grocery stores have empty shelves, fights in parking lots, retail establishments closing down, flights canceled, cruise ships idled in port. But today I haven't come to rehearse the calamity. I think cable news does a good enough job of making us all afraid. Instead, what does God's word have to tell us about these frightening times in which we live? Jesus warned us long ago that there would be days just like the ones we're experiencing now. In your Bibles, in Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse 6 and verse 7, we find these words. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. So Jesus foretold of pestilence, infectious outbreaks that would occur as a sign of the last days that we are now living in. 
But he also reminded us that the end is not yet. COVID-19 is not one of the seven last plagues. The world has certainly seen its share of natural disasters, wars, and global infectious diseases. This is not the end of the world, but you can see where it's leading us. Global warming, rampant starvation around the world, locusts devouring crops in Russia and Asia, an unstable North Korea, and now the pandemic of coronavirus. Jesus in verse eight of that same passage says, all these things are the beginning of sorrows, not the end. More than likely, we haven't seen anything yet. So how are we as God's people to react to this current crisis? Well, panic is certainly not called for. Panic paralyzes us and it prevents us from having rational thinking. We trust in our God and our times are in his hands. Nor is the misguided assumption that as Christians, no harm can ever befall us. It is a complete misread of Psalms 91 to assume that we are somehow invulnerable to war or to plague or to disaster. The promises of this chapter are uniquely fulfilled in the days of tribulation when the remnant are threatened with execution and the seven last plagues are falling. Commenting on this passage, especially Psalms 91:11, Ellen White says these words, in the time of trouble just before the coming of Christ, the righteous will be preserved through the ministration of heavenly angels but there will be no security for the transgressor of God's law. Yes, there is indeed a time foretold where God's people will have complete protection, will be invulnerable to any infection or any problem. But clearly, we have already witnessed too many martyrs who have died for their faith. Are we to assume that God was not telling them the truth? Are faithful Christians somehow untouched by calamity and disease? Jesus went on to say in verse 9 of Matthew 24, he warned, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. If we were immune to pestilence and disease today, then we would never die. So what's going on here, and how do we understand God's promises of divine protection? Will there be any deaths in the end of time and deaths now from pestilence? Will any saint die? I recall the words of David in Psalms 23, beginning of verse 4. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The essence of David's testimony is not the absence of risk or harm or even death. The message of this passage is found in five short words. I will fear no evil. The Christian life is marked by complete trust in God and is marked by the absence of fear. We don't fear evil or disaster. We make reasonable preparations and reasonable caution we take in the face of danger but we expel fear from our hearts. Why? Because David also adds, you are with me. I don't fear disease because God is with me. Neither do I ignore the health message and assume that I can eat unhealthy foods and avoid disease. Our Adventist churches and churches of other faiths this past week closed, not because we did not trust God. We closed to protect the vulnerable among us we honor our faith by the love that we share to our neighbors. The church is not simply a building, it's a body of believers. The temporary closure of our building does not change who we are and what we've been called to be. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We don't run in fear of death and sickness. Instead, we confidently walk under the watchful eyes of our divine shepherd. You need not fear infection or sickness or death. We walk through life knowing that God is with us. Yet we wear seatbelts in our cars and helmets when we ride bicycles, and we socially distance ourselves in the midst of a pandemic following public health recommendations. 
This is not unlike what happened in the camp of Israel when they had serious infectious diseases like leprosy. We pick that up in Leviticus chapter 13, beginning at verse 45. Those who suffer from a serious skin disease must tear their clothing and leave their hair uncombed. They must cover their mouth and call out, unclean, unclean. As long as a serious disease lasts, they will be ceremonially unclean. They must live in isolation in their place outside the camp. So Israel isolated infectious patients to protect the uninfected. Am I afraid of contracting COVID-19? Of course not, and neither should you be. We follow prudent hand washing and social distancing and all the precautions we can take. But this world is not my home. My time here is God's business, and he will determine the time and the means of my exit from this life. But this world, we understand, cannot go on as it is. You see, his rod and his staff comfort me, and I'm confident in the care and protection that comes to me from the Lord. When three Hebrew boys stood before Nebuchadnezzar because they had not bowed down to the golden image, he threatened to throw them into a fiery furnace. Here's their response in Daniel chapter 3, beginning at verse 17. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the, God, the gold image which you have set up. But if not, I trust in the protection of God, but if not, I'm still going to serve him. You see, my hands and my life are secure in God, and he determines my times. He determines my safety for his own glory. Eternal life is our reward and our inheritance. Regardless of what may befall us in this life, we are pilgrims and strangers here. Now, I have experienced countless miracles in my life of divine protection and healing. But when God determines that my earthly sojourn is done, I trust him with my life and I trust him with my future. We can live lives without fear, without worry, and without panic. Jesus tells us not to worry about what we'll wear or what we'll eat or to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So I walk on through the valley of life. I pray that you will cast away your fear and your anxiety. Trust in God, the God of David and Daniel and millions of believers around the world. Let me add the testimony of the prophet Isaiah in two passages. The first is in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 17. He says, the work of righteousness will be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. As I grow in Christ and I become more like him, I have peace, quietness and assurance. Isaiah 41, 10, very familiar to us. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So my friends, be of good courage. The God of heaven is still on his throne, and he is still our defense. Romans eight twenty eight tells us that all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Rise up from your fear. Stop the worry. Trust your future to the God of heaven. He is our deliverer. He is our savior. He is our provider. Be of good cheer and encourage those around you. God bless.
Lord, we pray now that you would bless every, wa- every worshiper, those who are online, those who may be living in fear. May they take courage to know that your presence, your power, and your protection is available to each one of them. In God's name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity we have had to worship together today. Even though many of us are miles apart, we are one in the Spirit and one in the Lord. Keep us by your grace is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching today. We hope to see you coming back next week. We'll be here to worship with you. God bless.